YouTube, it's Troy from Double Amputee RV TV. Well, I'm going to work on this track a little bit more today. I apologize for it uh, being so long, but uh, since I put out a put out a video, but I've been trying to upload videos and I haven't been able to for the past week and a half. Anyway, I think I got the problem solved, so we're going to do this one more time uh, and see how this goes. But uh, anyway. I'm working on the back axle on this trike here, and I'm going to show you what I got going here. So I've, I've done a little bit of work on it here. I'm going to shut this off, set up the camera here, try to get it in the right position where you can see all the, all the goody stuff that I have out here that I've used for the past week. But Okay, let's try that. It might be just a little bit better. Anyway, I took this apart and I made a video of it, and uh, it didn't, uh, I was unable to upload it. But it's what I ended up doing with this thing is I, I got the wheels off, and I could not get the axle out because this right here was jammed. So, every day for about a week, I just kept putting this, uh, this blaster penetrant in there, and uh, after about a week, I was able to, uh, let me turn this around here, I had this screw out and I just kept filling it up because this key was stuck down in there underneath. This is the key that locks it into place into this groove here and, and holds this gear in place. But anyway, so I ended up getting the torch out and heating this thing up and I was finally able to get it to move get this thing to move back and forth a little bit it's still kind of tight on there but I was able to get her to move back and forth but I couldn't get the key out so I then got it over to this side heated it up and this right here I used an eight penny nail got down in there and just tapped on the head of it and that key popped out you can see it wasn't the rust that was holding it in there. It's actually, it actually got uh, mushroomed at the top and got wedged in there. But anyway, once we got that out, then we were able to get the axle out. Okay. with the axle out of it okay so right here at this end you can see a bunch of pits down in there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all this paint and everything off of here this side over here looks really good it's just where the uh, where the gear was at right here and right here on this uh, on the uh, Right where the uh, bearings are at. So it's what I got. So I got some filler primer. And so what I'm going to do is spray this thing, sand it, spray it, and sand it, and keep doing that until this thing is completely smooth. So anyway, I got I got the bearings still in here. I'm going to wait to pull these bearings out. I'm going to take them out after I get everything primered and ready to go and I'm going to mock this up make sure everything works and then I will pop these bearings out there's four of them here and I'm going to pop all four bearings out and then I'm going to find a brush to put on my drill and I'm just going to run it through this tube and see if I can get all the rust out of there and after I get all the rust out then I will uh I will press these old bearings in about halfway and then I can paint this and I won't get a bunch of paint down in the tubes and then I will knock the bearings out and then it will be ready for, for assembly later. A uh, mistake that I made, I found, I found a site with about old tricycles with some forms on it and I sent some pictures of my trike and showed them what I had, the stickers that were on it. So a guy sent me a spec sheet on this on this tricycle and it says that this is a 5 8 axle. So I ordered 
some 5 8 bearings and then my adapter right here for my disc brake that is also 5 8 but I went to install this on the, on the shaft and it doesn't fit so anyway I got out my caliper here let me get this turned around here just a little bit and it's 17 millimeter it's a 17 millimeter axle so it's a newer trike than what I thought it was so anyway I had to reorder reorder stuff and I'm hoping this package right here that I got today is going to be 17 millimeter bearings fit over okay so the next problem I had let me get this put back so I don't get these confused is this adapter right here so I called my buddy the machinist see if he wanted to whip me out something that would work for me and he said he knew of a company I think they're in Oklahoma called Staten. Anyway, they make an actual 17 millimeter adapter like this, but it's got holes in it where you can mount the disc brake right to it so I don't have to use washers and adapters and everything like I did on this one. So anyway, I called the company this morning. Uh, I guess it had some really nasty storms where they're at last week and they're a little bit behind schedule, but they went ahead and we're going to machine the part for me today. They're going to zinc it for me next week. And by the end of the week, they should have it mailed out to me. So I should have a really nice adapter coming that is made strictly for disc brakes. I will have to look up the name of that, that company. And you can look at the stuff that they have. It's mainly for go-kart stuff. But uh, anyway, their parts are going to work for me. So... My next little bit that I had was the disc brake adapters. So, I finally got a couple of adapters out of China. Here's, here's one of them. The second one I've modified so I could get it onto the 17 millimeter axle. So pull that out. So this gear will go on. In my, here we go, this way. So this gear will mount about right there. With this adapter, the reason I ordered two of them was I'm going to have to take these adapters and where this bend at is in right here, I'm going to heat this adapter up and make it flat across there. And I'm going to make both these adapters exactly the same. So I'll have one that's going to go on the axle here. And I'm going to set the other one right next to it. And then I'm going to mark it. Well, let me get this one over. I'm going to mark it right where it needs to be right there. And I'm going to actually cut it off and make it where it rounds. So the welder, I will actually move this bracket over. And it will be mounted someplace over in here. So, but I have to wait for the adapter for my disc brake where I can, I can make sure that everything lines up. <sighs> because I got to I got to hit that little slot there with the disc brake and these are, these are directional. So that'll go in there. So you can see how close that bracket is. So when I straighten it out, I should be able to mount it right over next to it here and then I will have the welder make like a little triangle that'll go down so it'll be welded from here to here and then to get the 200 and 
three millimeter on there, I'm going to have to have this moved out to at least four inches here. Right now it's like two and three quarters, so I need four inches. So this will, I may have them just do it straight and come out and around. And then my brake will be right out the back because this right here is level. So my brake will come right out the back, my caliper and everything. Because one of these days I'd like to switch to hydraulic brakes. So I'm trying to set it up for the future too where I can upgrade stuff as I go. But anyway, it looks like we're about ready to start spraying this stuff and getting some stripper on it. And getting all the paint off. And it's called... Clean strip, premium stripper. So I'm hoping that this is going to work. I'm going to test it on a couple small pieces and see see how it works. I got some wire brushes, steel wool, and some scrapers and some rubber gloves. So anyway, we are going to try it and see how it works. Let's give it a little spray and I said 15 minutes. And it should work. So we're going to see how it goes. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. Let's see uh, if any of this comes off. This is not doing too bad. Coming off. Okay, there's the first piece. It cleaned up pretty nice. I got a couple little spots that got some divots I got to work on, but that ought to work. So tomorrow morning I'm going to start on the axle and the gear and the framework here. Okay, we're going to try this again today. We've been uh, trying to get out here for about four or five days, but it keeps raining, and with this metal roof that I have on the, over my porch here, boy, you can't hear nothing when it starts raining. So, anyway, we're going to give this a try. We're going to continue stripping some parts and uh, getting them ready to go. Uh, like I said, I'm still waiting for some parts from China and Hong Kong so I can... Uh, so I can get everything in the right positions here for my brakes and everything. And then we'll go see if we can find a welder that'll weld it up for us. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm not going to show you this whole process. I'm just going to spray this stuff, start scraping on it. Okay, well here's the back end after I got it all, all stripped down. I've got it sanded. I had to start off, uh, if you can see here, it had a lot of rust on it and up through here. So I ended up starting off with uh, with 100 grit and got everything where it was pretty smooth. Then I went to, uh, I'm working on the 150 and then I will go 220 on all the metal. And then uh, as soon as I get the welding done on this thing, I am going to start primering this and then I will start off at 220 and I will keep sanding up until 2000 and hopefully everything will be nice and smooth and it'll turn out nice. But anyway, I got the I got the rest of my little parts here done. I got the got the gear ready to go. I got a little bit of filing to do to to make it look like it's brand new. But I got a little spacer for the wheel. And these are the couple of bolts. Uh, since I'm going to paint this thing sunshine yellow, I think I'll make these black. So we'll have little black dots and they'll go back here. And then these adapters for my disc brakes. Got those ready to go. I'll have to uh, 
I still got to heat these up and straighten them right here and then I will cut it off where I need to and mount that thing back here but anyways coming right along um, I'm still waiting for parts which will probably be another week or two uh, coming from China and Hong Kong so anyway as soon as I get my parts I will see if I can find a welder that will weld this up for me in the meantime I will probably get the rest of the parts that I'm going to paint ready to go and that way uh, this winter when I get started and start assembling this thing it'll be it'll be all ready to go but anyway yeah I think as what I'll do is just get this thing primered and I'll kind of mock things up and as soon as I as soon as I mock everything up make sure everything works then I will tear it all apart again and paint it so anyway that's the plan anyway we'll see you on the next video Bye.